Avi Maria, and welcome back to Catechids. In the first episode, we talked about the commandments in general, and then we took a closer look at the first commandment. Now we are going to discuss the second and third commandments. The second commandment is, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. This commandment forbids blasphemy, unnecessary and false swearing, and taking lightly God's sacred name. Blasphemy is using the holy name of God, Jesus Christ, the Virgin Mary, or the saints in an offensive way. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says that the Lord's name is holy. For this reason, man must not abuse it. He will not introduce it into his speech except to bless, praise, and glorify it. So many people today use the holy name of God as merely a byword or just another expression, thinking very lightly of it and not treating it as the sacred name of their Lord and Creator. Shucks. Your turn. Yes! Oh my God, you are so lucky. Perjury, or false swearing, is also against the second commandment. St. Ignatius sums this up in his spiritual exercises by saying, Do not swear, whether by the Creator or any creature, except truthfully, of necessity, and with reverence. What are you doing, Anne? I'm looking for my doll. Did you take it? No, I haven't seen it. You're acting kind of suspicious. I swear to God I haven't. Now we've discussed the negatives of the second commandment, but what about the positives? The Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us that we should keep the Lord's name in mind in silent, loving adoration. We should try to praise and love God's name and make acts of love in reparation for sins committed against it. We can also try to bow our heads slightly whenever we say the holy name of Jesus or hear it said to show our love and to honor it. O oh Mary, Mother of the Author of the Ten Commandments, please help us to always have a great love and respect for the most sacred name of your Son. May we never take his name in vain, but always show great reverence towards it, and lead others to do the same by our prayers and example. Amen. Now it's time to talk about the Third Commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The book of Exodus tells us, Six days you shall labor. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work. So on Sundays, in honor of the rest God took after the creation of the world, we should rest. But this isn't a chance to be lazy and do whatever we want. We should take a break from the work we do throughout the rest of the week and spend some time with family or perhaps doing some charitable work and spend a little extra time with God in prayer. We should avoid unnecessary labor that can wait until the next day. Dad, I'm going over to the neighbors to mow their lawn. But it's Sunday. Besides, their grass isn't very tall yet. It can wait. But I'm saving up money to buy that new video game. And I get 15 whole dollars every time I mow their lawn. Sundays are a day to do good for others. But our motive should not be to earn money or to do things that we can make time for another day of the week. We must respect the holiness of the day and give honor to God. One way to do this is by avoiding unnecessary work that keeps us from spending time with family and God. Yeah, you're right, Dad. I'll have time on Tuesday. Hey, can we play a game of Monopoly? On Sundays, the Church gives us the obligation of attending Holy Mass. It's good to go on other days, too, but on Sundays, unless we're really sick, we must go. And we should go joyfully. We shouldn't complain about having to get up early, but should rise promptly and get ready quickly. At Mass, we should do our best to pay attention and to participate in this sacred celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Anthony, it's time to get up. You've got a soccer game today. Yes! Anthony, it's time to get up. We've got to get ready for Mass. Ugh. Can I sleep for just five more minutes? Father, we celebrate the memory of Christ, your Son. We, your people, and your ministers, we call his passion his resurrection from the dead, and his ascension into glory. And from the many gifts you have given to us, we offer to you, God of glory and majesty, his holy and perfect sacrifice, 
the bread of life, and the cup of eternal salvation. These two girls are physically present at Mass, but their minds are elsewhere. Even though they are in the church during the Mass, they are not fulfilling their Sunday obligation because they aren't really participating in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. O Mary, Mother of the Author of the Ten Commandments, help us to keep holy the Lord's Day. Please help us to sanctify our Sundays in a special way by spending it with God and for the benefit of others. Amen.